not A Rod. I don't want to discriminate everybody. Anyone with a nickname that's anywhere close to that. You hate Los Rods. <laughs> Los Rods. There you go. <clears throat> What's that, Robert? We are live now. Welcome Facebook. Uh oh, Facebook's here. Okay. So we're on the 162 experience. So if you guys want to share that or whatever, I don't know what that means. Or if not, oh, share. I could, do, I could probably do some social medias. Yeah, Ugh. you should do that because you know how to do the social medias. Social it up. The medias. What is it? VD. What? V- <laughs> we're on the VD Just podcast. The, tip. the 162 the tip? experience. <clears throat> mm-hmm. The THC. PCB. Did you get some air what is it, Benito? The 162 experience. <clears throat> it's on uh, Facebook. It's hot in here. Maybe it's this awesome coffee I'm drinking. <laughs> and by awesome, you mean crap. Crap. That's exactly. Oh, the house is talking. <laughs> the house is saying something. <laughs> is the house on the mic? House, what do you have to say? House. Dear house. The door is ajar. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a door. It's a freaking door. <laughs> Stop it. 162 experience. So much sharing going on right now. So much. Share, share with the world. Liking and sharing. Find it. <clears throat> Probably. I feel like I should have my phone out. You should. Everyone's always looking at their phones. Want friends to see your post? No, Facebook. Is there any Pokemon? Let's post shit that only I can see. <laughs> Is there yeah, any like Pokemon? Look, a Pikachu. <laughs> Marty, there's a Pikachu should on you. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Apparently, I, I only shared that with myself. <laughs> that should help. Because <laughs> that's a good setting, Facebook. What the fuck? I'm not seeing it. Because marketing. Because Edric. Right here. Oh shit. There's no Ed Rank. Yep. Doesn't exist. What, who's Little Nico? Is that a thing? Little Nico? It says G. Oh no, that's a Q. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> races, man. Already. Yeah. Oh, wait, well, it was probably Steve. <laughs> We're apparently live on live. Yeah, right here. Are we? Yeah. I just said hi to Jeff. Oh, hey. <laughs> we're there, but we're here. I'm going to like it. How does that work? Imagine. Then I'm going to love it. You can love it. It's well, smile it. You can do all those, huh? I'm loving it's it like right a, uh, It's like a periscope feed. I didn't know you could do all that. <clears throat> now I'm going to cry a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit, though. <laughs> and just the tip starts in three, two, one. And I have no hair. He's wearing the Reagan shirt. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Hi. Oh, Hi, man. You're loud. Are we on the microphone? Uh oh. Look at this marketing. So much marketing going on. I just got so marketed. Oh, so, uh, so, <laughs> so much marketing going I'm on. I'm even like doing that thing that you're not supposed to do. Like, like we're doing this while we're doing it? Yeah, and this. Yeah. See, Benito? It's all going to work out well. Don't worry, we're killing that hour fast. <laughs> we got this. Like, Are we actually recording this? Well, this is on the live stream. What, Robert, whenever you're so ready, yes. you, what time is that? I don't know. Ooh. Yeah. Right. Let's just jump in. Let's go. Let's rock and roll this thing. All right, so we're going to start. We've already said everything. We're done. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Good morning and welcome to the 162 Experience. We're coming to you live from Southern California. Hey, what's going on? Facebook, how are you today? We're rocking and rolling. Gentlemen, how are you doing this morning? Doing great, Benito. (laughs) (laughs) We got some interesting guests in town today. Actually, we got some international guests in town. This is going to be an amazing show. We're going to be talking about some uh, different social media aspects, some different marketing aspects. We're going to be uh, discussing how you can take these ideas and implement them into your business. So I want to introduce a couple of the guys we have uh, with us today. We got right to my right. We got Marty mm-hmm. here with us. Uh, one over, Marty. How you doing? I'm doing great, Benito. Awesome, awesome. Shane, right next to Marty, right over here in the uh, captivating American outfit. What up? How you doing, Shane? Captivating. 
And then uh, all the way at the end, we got Jeff, America. who is uh, flying in from Vancouver, Canada. Jefe from Vancouver. I did. Yes. <laughs> awesome. And I have coffee. So I'm Sweet good. coffee. He's ready to go, rock and roll. So, um, yeah, let's get right into the show right away. Um, you guys have... I was told um, there would be prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. And no. here we go, Benito. That's on, that's on Thursdays. Perfect. Um, so what we uh, want to talk about is some of the business aspects you guys have. You know, we want to talk about, uh -oh. there's a lot of people that have questions about social media, whether it's Snapchat, Instagram, you know, stuff on Facebook. And I kind of want to get into asking you guys, what <laughs> what's your niche and in your industries you do? Like, what, what is it you do? You have businesses that, uh, you know, you're selling all these products, whether it's affiliate programs. And uh, Marty, what is it? Are, so you're kind of like a social media guy, but what what does that mean? If you somebody asks you, you know, what is social media all about? What is marketing about? What does what's, that mean? What's yeah. your niche, Marty? My niche. So I own a, a social media marketing agency called Bad Rhino. So it's essentially a marketing agency, and we focus on social media marketing. So again, what's that mean? From the Niji. From the Niji. <clears throat> so we work with clients, both large and small. A um, couple of golf clients, a couple of beer clients, handful of. Smaller businesses. I'm using my hands because we're on the video. Wrong hand thing, you just handful. <laughs> a handful. Get articulated. Um, your hands. And what we do is we strategize to pull everything together, everything. get their message out online via social media channels, like you mentioned a bunch Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, all of them. Make them tie together and get them to get some sort of sale, some sort of action. What about Pokemon, though? No, no what Pokemon. About Snapstagram. Later. Snapstagram, that's coming out next. And get like their business one. out there, brand name. And make sales eventually. Use marketing, marketing things. Marketing things. Shane, what about your business? So you, I know uh, Erica, your wife has um, a big horse business. You guys, that's what you guys do. Uh, how are you guys marketing that, or wh what's the main thing, or do you just ride horses all day long? We're fucking awesome, and therefore, <laughs> people like us, and it works well. I don't know. It's 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 very easy to market a good business, and very difficult to market a shit business because it'll work at the beginning and you'll get them lots of new customers and then it will fall apart very very hard and then they will not be able to get new customers past that point really because word of mouth takes over so strongly so the fact that Erica and I both run that business we make sure that you know customer service is a top priority that the quality quality of our work is a top priority and because the product quality is so high there's literally no complaints. There's been like two complaints in like five years of doing this and they were personal opinion complaints. They weren't anything that could be validated, proved or otherwise, you know, brought about um, in any serious way. So basically they walked away and even when we did that, we refunded them the full amount, even though we, you know, we'd put in the no full refunds. month of work Money back we guarantee. still refunded them. Well, it's not even a money back guarantee. It's more like a go fuck yourself fund, mm -hmm. right? Like you don't own us because you pay us X amount of money. And I don't, I don't really mean that in the abrasive way that it is because in our horse business, we run that a whole lot different, differently than I do with my personal brand, which is the abrasive entrepreneur. Um, we're very polite to those customers, but at the same time, you can't let customers that are negative run your business and a lot of people will say you always hear the customers always right or they're either straining or just hanging on keeping those customers and you're telling them how you run your shit is like you know what if we don't like you basically move on yeah correct jeffy yes Hefe. <laughs> Benito. so uh what is your business i know you want you do a lot of email marketing what's your business actually actually i know you guys all do email marketing um explain what email marketing is if people don't know what that is marketing for the, via email. for the three people that uh <laughs> Listen to this show. Yes. So, uh, well, I don't know. Selling and uh, getting in front of your audience via email. But a lot of people say email is dead. Is that uh, perfect? Yes. Is that true at all? Yes. No. Don't use email. Let <laughs> us. Let us do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Email is the, the foundation that internet marketing is built on top of. Foundation. So it's never going to go away. So in your it's opinion, what is never, internet marketing? What, is, what does that mean? So people, never. they have a brick and mortar business. Can they automatically take that on the internet and start selling shit or... Yeah, they can start selling shit, and they can start um, building their building their brand, building their business, generating leads for that business. I mean, it's, <laughs> sky's the limit, right, Marty? All about leads, Jeff. Right? It's yeah. all about leads. <clears throat> Wait, the leads. The leads. No, you can take any, just about any business, as long as 
as long as your message is right, kind of to Shane's point, is um, people get confused on the internet and what it is for marketing. They think, okay, I'm going to flip a switch and everybody's going to come jump on an email list and then you can email Magic button, I'm rich, biatch. Exactly. It doesn't really work that way. Um, You can make some quick wins um, and do some fun little stuff that way, but for a long term, you got to tie everything together. So if you have a business that's just a brick and mortar business, like a restaurant, you want to start advertising on the internet, you're going to make sure that your message that you have in the restaurant, the message that you have on magazines or any other print material or however else you're marketing matches the same thing that you're going to send on the internet, whether it's Facebook or email or Facebook Live (laughs) or anything like that. So you want to make sure the message is congruent, but to Shane's point, you also have to have a good product because shitty businesses just don't work. It doesn't matter how much marketing you do. So if you're writing a newsletter or you're just starting your email marketing, how are you getting customer or clients or just uh, building your list? How do, how do people start doing that immediately? Say hi to Bert. Say hi to Bert. Hi. Or how did, you, how did you start building your list? <clears throat> Jeff? Yes. How Jeff. did you build your list? What's the question? List, <laughs> list building. List building. Jeff has yes. huge lists. I have huge lists. They make all the marketers jealous. What was the question? How do you build a list? Uh, How do you start to build a list? If somebody's interested, like, oh, okay, you know what? I've actually wanted to dive into email marketing, or I've actually wanted to, you know, have a newsletter, but how do I get those first five, ten customers? Or I don't even know if they're customers, if that's what you want to call them, if they're not even... Say niche at least five times in your response. Niche. 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 Well, I get, um, I mean, you want to, I hate to say attract, but you want to attract people... (laughs) to your product and the way I've done it in the past is by magnetically magnetically (laughs) is is by creating a (laughs) a a value product a value perfect giveaway right which you in exchange for someone's email address and and marketing information it's a bribe exactly Um, you provide them with this information they get put on your list that's horrible you know exactly what they're interested in because They wanted to download your specific um, freebie. So how is so, how easy is it to come up with that freebie, uh, the bribe for somebody? Not difficult. I mean, if you have a product already that you're marketing or that you have, or if it's an affiliate product or whatever, what I usually do is I take a piece of that product. A piece. A piece. Just a piece. That's a small just a chunk. Just a piece of that product, and I, I just sort of pull that out of the product and create a, a uh, thing. A thing. A giveaway based on that. And what would that thing be? Like an example. Free cocaine. Well, for example, I... <laughs> Works well in some markets. <laughs> I, I sell marketing tools and systems and lead generation tools and things like that. So I would, I would create a, a product that uh, tells people the importance of building your list, how to build your list, just something simple like that to sort of get them into the funnel, Yeah. get them into the loop on what I'm actually selling on the, kind of on the back end. So when you talk about internet marketing on your aspect, when you created your company, the uh, um, all those tools you have, is that talking about social media stuff or is it just straight basic no. list building tools, video marketing, all that? Well, there's sort of like two, like my business is kind of two tiered. One is one is it's marketing tools. Can that, you not hit the mic, please? <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Appreciate it. At least it. I'm not dropping it. <laughs> Boom. Got that one. Yeah. Wow. What was I talking about? <laughs> Your two-tier business. Two-tier part. business, right. Leads. Leads. So <laughs> one part of, well, half of my business is teaching people how to market. Right? Is it so possible to generate training. 50 leads in one day? Yes. Well. And the other half of my business is <laughs> is uh, the actual systems behind the lead generation, the autoresponders, the lead management tools, the contact management, the task management, all that sort of stuff, page builders. So what would you tell people that are generating either one to five leads a day? I'm assuming that's not a whole lot for a lot of internet marketing businesses, but what would you tell them to do besides buy your product right now? Scale it up. Scale it up. <laughs> it's, it's working, so Ad, do adver- more of it. Stop being a more. pussy. Yeah. You can do a lot with five leads a day as long as they're the right leads. How much can you do with five leads a day? You can do a lot. Like what? You can make $10,000 a day. <laughs> wow. can, you, can you give us a, a picture of what that would look like, Jeff? I can. <laughs> So you're full of shit, is what you're saying. Um, yeah, exactly. that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. <laughs> that was that 12 minutes, right? Yep. Yeah. Are we done? <clears throat> I'm leaving. Marty, generate yes. $10,000 with five leads. Go. Yep. Just sell them um, $2,000 product. <laughs> Boom. Hey. That's about it. 
the end. Jeff, mm -hmm. where if the fuck the right was people. that simple for you? Why didn't you answer that? So, Marty, you've that integrated a lot of Instagram on your businesses and different social media platforms. Is there one that you love right now that's just uh, giving you the most amount of leads per day? Or In terms of leads, it's still Facebook. Um, if you're just talking about like affiliate products and you know information products uh, that you're selling out there, Facebook's still king. However, Instagram is gaining steam quickly because it's on the same ad platform. So you can target that very, very well. And people seem to enjoy all the visual stuff on Instagram. And um, Why would people want to put their business on Instagram or their businesses on Facebook, though? Great question. Because there's tons of traffic there. <laughs> and what is traffic? Yeah, what is we'll traffic? go with that. What is traffic? People is are hearing this. They're like, what? Yeah. So traffic is people. I mean, that's no different than if you're driving down the street and the highway is full. And there's people everywhere. Um, that's traffic. Foot traffic. If you're a brick and mortar business, people walking in internet traffic or people seeing your message and your products and your brand message out there on uh, on the internet and if you get stuck in too much traffic you end up hating it like Jeff and Jeff hates traffic so if you have a business online <laughs> and you want to get more <laughs> leads more traffic there's a lot of people that don't know or they do know just a little bit about what you know pay-per-click is you know paying for ads paying for those leads to come in can you describe kind of what that is and what kind of model that so people can just get a picture of what that means so well, I'll let Shane talk about pay traffic, but it should be an element in everybody's business Fuck. because it's pay to play. Time to put on my serious yeah. bandana. Yeah. You gotta... But what about free traffic? What about it? Where's all the free traffic? If if here, hold this for a while. If free traffic is working, how's your phone? You really want to um, <laughs> supplement it with paid traffic because anything that free traffic can do, paid traffic can do better. It's just a matter of not being a giant puss and uh, being willing to, willing to put your money where Marty's mouth is. <laughs> Isn't that right, Marty? <laughs> so how much are you talking about people paying? Is it just like a, a dollar a day, a couple bucks a day, or is there a, is there a formula out there that um, people should follow if they want to get into paid advertising on the internet? Start small, scale. Start small, make it work, then do it more. <laughs> Just over and over again. Which is fancy words for scale. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. I don't want to be fancy. No. <laughs> and uh, Shane, you're, you're uh, basically an expert at Facebook ads. What does that basically. mean though when people, when people hear that? They're like, okay, I, I want to add it to you. And it means they want me to press a magic button and for them to be rich. But that's not how it works. First, we have to understand what their business is, what it does, who it serves, their target market, exactly the message that's going to sell whatever products or services that they have to that target market. And giant air breath, yes. as opposed to the non-air <laughs> breaths, for that. which are not breaths. So in your business, the <laughs> brand uh, abrasive entrepreneur, who is your target market you're going after? Your mom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's already sold. But for realsies, <laughs> it's people that want to grow and expand their already existing businesses, successful businesses. Um, I spent a lot of time helping people that didn't have businesses to begin with, and that's just a shit show. Um, hopefully this isn't like on PBS or something where my whole segment is beeped, but whatever. Um, no, I used, to, I used to spend a lot of time trying to help people that don't have a business build a business, and that didn't work. It just doesn't. I mean, it does sometimes, but it's like, half a percent of the time. But why is that? Just because it was nothing? Because, was no existing because foundation? they're not business people. So they've got a whole fucking hill to climb before they ever get to a point where they can really start dealing with business itself. First, they, they have to become a business person, and then they have to start doing the act of business. Um, and that's a long uphill battle. Um, not to, you know, stop people or disenfranchise them with starting a business because it is possible. I mean, all three of us had to start a business at one point and now we're we experts, whatever the fuck that means. Um, <laughs> really, you know, and we all started it. I don't fucking know Do what I'm really? doing. And then we figured it out. Like, cause the three of us all came up in something that didn't exist when we were starting, right? Like there was nobody else. There wasn't competition. There wasn't, rule books there wasn't how to guides there, there was like here's how to program html here's how to build a form here's how to do php here's how to do uh or here's a site that does email marketing but has no instructions um etc and we had to piece all this stuff together 
Um, yeah. And it's, a, like I said, a long uphill battle. And that's when, that's after you get past the mentality, the mindset part of, okay, I'm not going to be a consumer anymore. I'm going to be a producer. And that's the big difference between business owners and your average person out on the street is they have an employee mindset, right? Versus an employer mindset. And that is absolutely huge because you can't run a successful business with an employee mindset. You genuinely can't. No. And this is where I, I don't see eye to eye with Gary V. So whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that he's wrong, mm. but our message is definitely not the same. You know, um, he's always like, and I do agree that you have to think like your target audience. But at the same time, you have to think like an employer, not like an employee. Some of the big differences are, you know, um, like common things that you see in politics. For example, minimum wage. As, a, as an employer, you realize that minimum wage being increased to $15 an hour is going to cut out the bottom of everybody's jobs. So anyone that's not a highly skilled employee is going to get axed or outsourced with a machine, a computer, a robot, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas an employee says, oh, hell yeah, we need $15 minimum wage because that's living our wage and all of this other shit. Well, what they don't understand is that when you raise the minimum wage, you're then raising the cost of living for everything else because what used to be a floor of 8 to $10 an hour is now a floor of $15 an hour. That cost is transferred over into the sales and the costs of products and services and all of that. And now the, the big argument that you'll hear from politicians is, well, that does, that's not how it works with big business. They've got so much profit. Well, it, what is it? Eight, like 80% of business in this country is based off of small businesses. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's where minimum wage and shit like that really affects American business and really worldwide businesses because most of it is small business. Right. Um, and it's getting over different mindset, things like that, and kind of deprogramming yourself. And once you've deprogrammed yourself, then you can move on to the, okay, how do I make these business decisions? How do I start putting together a business? How do I look at these thousand pieces that all need to come together to form the structure that's going to be my business? So do you offer, do you help people get into the mindset of the employer or you just want to take people that are my, already there and kick ass and go even further? I have a book called The Final Fight that helps people get over their mindset issues. And it's basically the story where I went from being a Applebee's waiter um, to being a really high paid consultant making, you know, 30 grand a month and more, you know, at my peak, I was making 75 grand a month. Right now I'm down because I had back surgery in February. Yeah. It didn't work and a whole bunch of complications along those lines. So I'm not working as much. I'm still making more than the average employee does because I've got these systems in place. Mm -hmm but not nearly as much as what I was making. But System. the point is, I would, formulas. that book teaches you to scale to anywhere in between that, from where you can still be comfortable, bills are paid, everything's taken care of, and I haven't had a job in six years, neither has my wife. We just do what we love with, with our own businesses. She gets to ride horses all day long. I get to help people grow their businesses all day long and help her grow her business. Really, my <laughs> life is like, Eight hours a day, hanging out with my wife, two to four hours a day, working on business, and the rest of the time is goofing around or sleeping or whatever. I mean, yeah, we were hanging out all day yesterday just for lunch, and she did, yeah. there was no time restraints or anything, you know? Yeah. I think that's what people are looking for. They would just want that almost like time freedom. Yes, yeah. and see, and that's what my, help, or my book helps people to get from, is from being just an employee, like you decided, okay, I want more, but I have no idea how to get there. And you know that your mindset needs to change. That's what that book was built for, because it's everything that I used, and you've read it. It's specific strategies. It's not just woo-woo bullshit. It's here's actual, like strategies and um, I don't know actions that you can take to get from point A to point P which is profit right that's that's <laughs> point it P. yeah P. <laughs> that's awesome it's um, not it's 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 really hard to make that shift I think, yeah between employee to business person yeah but why is that in your experience why why is that such a hard shift for people to go into opposite <clears throat> well for for me it was it wasn't that difficult because I, I don't know you have to have something in your head that that makes you be an entrepreneur right it's like I don't know I don't know how I got there 
but you know it's it's something despite repetition the like you just world. you just tried and tried and failed and then it, all of a sudden it just hit or was it what was i tried it? and tried and and i failed and i tried again and I, I just kept at it but not because i wanted to um just just have a business it was more like i wanted like shane said i wanted the the freedom to be able to do like stuff like this yeah it was not like wanting the business was the strong driving factor it was not wanting to be a part of corporate america and all of their bullshit like if i wanted a business i I could go buy a franchise or a hardware store or or whatever you want yeah right and that's running a business but it's you know this is a lot different it's a lot different mindset it's there's a lot of risk that you have to take um but i mean if you do if you do it right you know you it's it's cool. <laughs> you know, it's, it's great. It's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you guys are flying out here in the middle of the week. You know, not everybody gets to do that. And I think that's what you're talking about is that time freedom. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Like, know? I get, like Shane said, I get to, like Shane said, I get to spend time with Shane's wife. And, uh, <laughs> that's why no, he doesn't want to do that. With my wife and kids, right? And I get to go to all the baseball games and go to all the tournaments and stuff. And You know, as I put on Facebook this week, like, I'm hanging out in a gigantic mansion on the top of La Jolla and you should show our view here Marty on the Facebook live um, with a group of some of my best friends for a giant fucking sleepover for a week and I'm 35 years old if someone told me as a kid that that's legitimately what I was going to be getting paid to do (laughs) I would have said they were fucking crazy but where do I sign up you know (laughs) and that is actually our lives that's what we do is we can fly from other parts of the world to go hang out with our friends and basically do fucking sleepover parties where we play video games but for us video games is marketing on the internet and instead of getting fucking power up pokemon coins we get cash american dollars right that's the difference and that's that's what we do and that's what this point p yeah, Jeff gets coffee. Enables you to do. And I get coffee when Jeff I gets want. a lot of coffee and then Skypes us, and we can't hear him. But we can hear <laughs> everyone else, clearly. Mm. Isn't that right, Marty? Marty speaking, of, speaking about this Pokemon thing, uh, are you guys doing uh, learning the advertising aspect? Or not learning, but are you guys selling shit on that? Mm-hmm. Doing anything about with that already? Because it's a, it's a major thing. People are running out in the middle of the streets and getting run over and everything. <laughs> but, you know, what, what do you guys see with that? Is there trends going on in the marketing world? I sell accident insurance to Pokemon people. Marty, you were saying that their businesses just sort of jumping on the bandwagon and completely like doing yeah. it wrong and I, I, there's totally so a lot of wrong. cool things i think you could do with it but it's funny to watch like what a lot of small businesses all of a sudden just decide i'm just going to do it with no rhyme or reason to it and they have no they have clue. no clue what the app was doing they have no clue people are just showing up and they're thinking anybody shows up that's good for them mm-hmm. um but there's it's, it's converting all of that foot traffic into something that pays you that's the problem exactly yeah, so then just traffic for traffic's sake is not necessarily the best thing that you want. So they're not going from point A to point P, as you say. They're going from like A to C, just getting the people there, and then they're not converting at all. Correct. No, it's just anything like it's like internet marketers. They see something that's a shiny object, and then they just go, oh, I'm going to do this. <clears throat> Holy shit, everyone else is doing this. I need to do this. Yeah, so the Pokemon yeah. craze is just blanketed across a bigger... Cause everybody seems to be doing it. But I think there's just, I think it's just the start of that. It's the tip, Jeff. <laughs> it's just the tip. <laughs> it's just the tip. Um, you'll see more apps like that. I mean, they've been around, like things like Foursquare. They could never make it fun enough that people would use it on a regular basis. But now this with, what do they call it? The reality. Augmented reality. Augmented reality. Augmented. So you're looking and, you know, you're seeing things there that aren't there. And they're playing things on their phone. Um, so there's there's going to be, <laughs> you know, as it matures, there's absolutely going to be something like Pokemon Go and different apps like that, I can see that growing. And it's pulling people together, getting them outside. So there's a lot of positive stuff that's going on. Dude, there's a sand there's shrew also on your some... counter. <laughs> Are you playing it right now? Did you bring it up? Yeah. There's a it's what? Right, it's right there. I don't <laughs> see it. But a did sand you take the acid this shrew. morning? Kick its ass, man. <laughs> don't let it sit there and taunt you. Got him. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Watch out. Some, sometimes those fuckers escape. They do. But the neat part about it is watch people just wander around with their phones and just try and do stuff. And you're like, what the hell is everybody doing? And you can immediately tell who is doing oh, the yeah. They're not looking for, you know, like, hey, where's the directions? They're actually, you could tell when they're actively engaged. Well, they travel in packs. Like little <laughs> they really do. Erica and I went out a couple of days ago in Escondido <laughs> to play this game and see what all this shit was about. And we saw 
no less than two dozen people playing this game, almost all in packs. There were a couple individuals playing, but it was hilarious. You know that they're playing because you look up and you laugh at each other, and you're like, you're a fucking dork. And they're like, so are you. And you're like, yeah, we are. And then you become instant <laughs> friends, and it's super weird. Because in a time when America and media would have you believe that we're so fucking divided, the fact that you can stop in the street at any part of town and talk to anybody of any race, religion, creed, or anything like that over something simple like a fucking Pokemon hunt <laughs> tells you that that narrative is bullshit. And that's something that I found from Pokemon that's actually really a neat takeaway is all of that stuff is bullshit. And you can create these conversations and that... Really, that's what all of social media is based around. That's why this app is so successful is because of the conversation around it. Correct. And it's Pokemon. Done. Yeah. And <laughs> fucking bin. Boom. Smash the mic. <laughs> Fuck this shit. I'm out. <laughs> that's fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Marty, are you, so you're doing, you're making A to P on Instagram and app. different platforms. You're making app. I'm Apple. making app. Apples. 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 A to profit. A to profit. A to yeah. Um, what what did, what what shows you, like Insta? Why did you choose Instagram? Why did you choose certain platforms to uh, help people market their businesses? <laughs> You're live. <laughs> um, it, so it, it has to do with where that market is. We were talking about traffic earlier. Yeah. So you don't want to send people that aren't interested in a product to that website because um, they're not going to buy. So if you send the wrong people there, the traffic doesn't mean anything. But if you send the right people there and you have the right message and a good product, then you should make a sale. So on the other side of it is not every channel needs to be used for a business to be successful on social media. So everyone ran Snapchat, and if you had a big audience, it's probably a good deal. If you didn't have a big audience, you're just putting you know snaps up there that really people weren't seeing. So you're just you know you're doing it for just to do it. Um, so it has to have, you know be well thought out, and you want to ultimately get conversions from it. You don't want to just post a bunch of things on Instagram and hope. But you want to target that. You want to run the right advertising. So Instagram could be a good thing. It could not be for certain so businesses. Is, so is Instagram for driving actual traffic, or is Instagram more for just like brand awareness or whatever you well, call it? Well, create. Depends who you create. ask. Yeah, you yeah. Got, you've got to create a relationship with that audience because, well, one thing, how many of you that have been on Instagram scroll down and you're like, fuck yeah, an ad? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. Right? But if it's something cool that's in that picture, you're like, hey, that's actually kind of fucking cool. You click it, and you might even follow that business. That is where the magic on Instagram actually happens is when they follow you because now they're following you by choice, and you give them enough, not even necessarily content because I'm not one of those, again, no. woo -woo people. I'm more of a direct response guy, and it's not to say that you can't do direct response directly in the ad, but by opening that dialogue and allow having your customers or potential customers allow you into the wor their world, it's a different relationship that you then have with those potential customers. And that's where you can introduce the sales and it's a lot less friction. How do you think getting access to those customers is, I guess, easier would be the thing? Would it be, because you know, you see like seven times you market a product or market some kind of visual aid and they, they see it or... Seven, Jeff. Some like... Only seven. You don't want to be seven. annoying though, right? Wouldn't Why? Why? I don't know. I'm just asking. I have no idea. Because you, you said like you want to see those sponsored ads, and you see them, and you're like, what the fuck is this? That's annoying. But when you put up a cool picture, much better. But how do you but know? But it's not just a cool picture. It also has to be related to your business and related to what you're going to sell. So this is where the art of it comes in. The art. You know, there's a science to knowing who to target <clears throat> and what to say and all of that. But then there's an art in understanding that fine line between what's just a random cool picture that somebody's gonna like versus what's a, a picture that ties your business into those customers' minds and makes you part of their daily world. You know? So, um, memes? Well, <laughs> memes can work with the right message. That's the thing. Like, they do. Um, Inspirational. I don't know, like Marty and I were talking about this <laughs> yesterday about you know McDonald's. They've been implanting images in people's heads for like 30, 40 years, right? And just now, a lot of those things are coming to fruition. Like it's been found that in this Pokemon app that there's hardwiring for a McDonald's endorsement. Well, years and years ago, McDonald's worked with Pokemon <laughs> to put that imagery out in front of kids in kids' meals and cartoons and commercials and all of that sort of shit. And now it's coming up and it's like there's zero resistance there. 
that's it on the big scale of what you can do with these sorts of things. Go. Go. Yeah, no, that's crazy, though, when you start thinking about how far in advance, when you don't even know. They're just planting seeds that kind of reignite. You know, Pokemon came out overnight, essentially, but it's really been building up for 25 years. Just like subliminal messages through McDonald's. Well, yeah. I mean, I doubt anybody was sitting there in 1990 or whenever Pokemon first hit the scene with the cards thinking, wow, this will be a great app one day. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that there was conversations over, you know, over time about how they can reignite old marketing campaigns. We know that that Pokemon will be in there somewhere. The medium doesn't matter. Right. The medium doesn't matter. Yeah. It's got to have something to do with nostalgia, too, because all those kids who are collecting Pokemon at in the when, what, early 90s? I think so. Well, How old are they now? 20. In their 30s? Right? Late 20s, early Late 30s. Late 20s, early 30s. So they're just like, oh man, I can do this on my phone now. <laughs> it's just re- reviving that idea. Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. Getting all those active users. Like we were talking yesterday about the, uh, we saw that Dos Equis commercial, you know? Like what happened with that guy? Is it, is it dead? Oh, yeah. Are they going to come out with a, uh, an, an app for the most interesting man in the world? That you would know? be really cool. The most interesting man app. alcohol app. Or just drunk people are wandering around trying to find shit. <laughs> oh wait, that's probably Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Pokey vodka. That's just that's just iPhones. Just iPhones in general. Yeah. Don't send that drunk text, right? <laughs> Shane, what got you? Uh, st- <clears throat> what got you liking Facebook ads? Facebook PPC. What got you uh, interested in that? Because I know you did like SEO before that, and you kind of I don't know if that died or you just chose not to do it anymore. It, did, it didn't die. It's like saying email marketing is dead. If I chose to pursue it, it would still be alive. Um, the problem is wh- when you become a business owner, you do a lot of risk management assessment, right? And the risks for doing SEO were far too great compared to the rewards. Like I would, I would have $75,000 paydays in a month. Just me, no employees. That was net <coughs> money that would come in. But then I'd have six months droughts where you couldn't get shit ranked in Google because they'd be switching up their algorithm and it wouldn't work. And so you'd go through these droughts and it really wasn't a sustainable business model. So because of that, I moved out of that and I knew, th- and I'd already been supplementing um, the SEO stuff with paid traffic all over the place with Google ads, with Bing ads, um, with display traffic, um, with, and now with PPV and now with uh, Facebook ads, Twitter ads, YouTube what is PPV? ads. It's just pay-per-view advertising. Basically, you pop up under, or pop under advertisements that come up on random websites. Basically, people have downloaded some sort of software, and in that they said, "Yes, it's okay to serve me a whole bunch of ads and other shit." As a term of, you know, using this toolbar or whatever it is. Can you kill the audio? Oh, ah, we're listening to. Damn it, Jeff! Why'd you turn it on? I didn't turn. It on. Fired. No, I don't so know. let's talk no, about this podcast. So you guys are um, in town. We're talking a lot about marketing. I know I'm learning a shitload from you guys. Um, if some, so, so we have, uh, you know, I get a lot of content I'm pushing out there where people want to start a podcast. So that's, that's what I know. And then what I want your guys' help with is the monetization of this. Mm-hmm. We're getting more eyeballs, getting more. Is that even the right word? Um, you know, what platforms can we use? What what can uh, what can we do? What's the next step? In, in your guys' opinion, how can we hold on? You, ju- you just asked like eighty-seven questions there. <laughs> so, what's your actual question? <clears throat> how can we monetize this podcast? There you go. Advertisers. <clears throat> it's a pretty good way. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Sponsors. Sell shit. <clears throat> um, you, the books that you have right here, right? So, a quick way that I see a lot of podcasters do is wherever they have their website where podcasts are hosts outside of iTunes, et cetera. Um, they'll have all the books that are recommended or they recommend. So they have Amazon affiliate accounts there. Just a simple way to kind of keep the money trickling in. So if you mention the book, then you mention, you know, your mini review on your blog and then you have an Amazon affiliate link. That's a simple way. I see quite a few talk about tools. So you could talk about Jeff's tools. You could talk about, <coughs> um, you could talk about anything as far as different tools that are out there and put them in there. And I see so many podcasters that are relatively new, been around for like six months to a year. I say, go for the resources, go to this page. And it's all affiliates. I mean, they have like 60 of them. Which is Um, a good thing. Which is a good thing, yeah. I mean, they have different options for like email providers, website hosting, 
um, even web designers, you know, a variety of things, anything they can monetize through the podcast when they're talking to it, they have a link that will take you there um, somewhere on their website. So those are just a couple of ideas off the top of my head. I mean, you have to get the downloads so you can get the advertisers. And there's tons of different networks out there where people are looking to sponsor and advertise podcasts because for Jeff, it's your, it's your niche. niche. It's a niche um, you know, type industry where even if you have a small community that's listening on a weekly or daily basis, advertisers want to reach them, you know, whether it's sports, whether it's marketing, whether you know, it can be anything. Um, so they're out there. Yeah. So now that we're talking about it, the internet tools, Jeff, we're going to put a link up on our podcast for your company just if people want to go and say, hey, you know what? I want to grow my business. See what it did there? You like that one? <laughs> yes. Um, put a link up. And you use my affiliate link, Benito. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll so, create a rotator. So, it can so that would that. be uh, one of the best things to do is just do affiliate links on. Well, it's just an option. Yeah. yeah, it's a way. It's definitely a way to do it. There's no best thing as an overlying blanket. It's testing shit until you find stuff that works with your market, with the people that are this is true. watching you. See what they want and then do more of it. It's not really rocket science. Marketing it's is a continuous, ongoing test, right? There's no, it's not day. like set that this we, is how it's going to work forever. We are basically three hairy testes. It's, <laughs> that's how this works. It's a continuous test and retest and test again yeah it's just continuous and then test some more right most people don't have the guts to do it even if you have one thing that hits and and makes you a bunch of money it's like well i can probably make more i probably do better right so you test something else against that and if it doesn't it doesn't if it if it does then you go with that right so it's just continuous most people give up you should never be satisfied with your results never Never. most people give up by the time they have to actually get and distill all those tests, that, you know, however it may be, it might be 12, it might be five, it might be a hundred. Mm-hmm. Most people won't do it fast enough or they won't stick with it to then distill down what's actually working for their product, service, business, whatever. Yeah. Well, this is another thing that my book gets into regarding the difference between an employee and an employee mindset as well is the reason that most people don't make money is they get to what they consider a failure and they stop. For us, it's not a failure, it's step one. You know, as you said earlier, these a lot of people get from step A to step C, they never get to step P, profit. They don't because they stop short. And it's not a matter of you did it wrong, it's a matter of you didn't get there yet. Right. And when you shift that mindset, that's when you can actually become a real life marketer. The end. I'm gonna get a nice I love that. That was awesome. So we want we started our YouTube so that's channel. That's how you for mon- that's how you monetize it. <coughs> so we did start our answer. YouTube channel for this podcast. Um, what is how would we maximize the use of that channel? How would we is, are we looking for subscribers? Are we looking again like you just said affiliate links on the YouTube? Like what uh, what what's your best? So you putting the audio? Are you putting the audio and the video up? Yeah. And obviously we need to go on iTunes too. I'm assuming we have to look at that. You know, but on our YouTube, are we? Uh, is it a good thing to just? Uh, I mean, it's obviously results in converting into cash, but is that because there's more subscribers, or how yeah. do we do that? There's more. There, there's a lot of traffic, but you also, if you want your podcast or any content to be found on YouTube, you, you make sure you have the right keyword strategy, and make sure that you're titling everything consistently. You have the right thumbnail so it looks clean and professional, especially if you want to attract advertisers. Um, one of the podcasts I listen to all the time is Bill Burr's and um, he does a great job whoever's doing it it just looks clean you know Joe Rogan has a great podcast and they have big YouTube followings that are on there so they put the podcast Another marketing on there. secret copy what works yeah so just copy that and you'll be good to go at least to start off but you want to make sure you title everything correctly um, the keywords so if it's about you know you start off a lot of times with sports stuff so make sure that you have those things and those elements in there and then also use your channel to subscribe to some other ones. And then from there, you know, it depends on how you're going to do it. Whether you're going to push it out via Twitter, you're going to put it out on Facebook, what type of traffic you want to drive back to your website. Are they going to use, um, you know, for advertising, you might want to be on iTunes so you can show all the download statistics and be able to send that over to them, you know, and say, hey, we get 10,000 downloads a month or whatever the number is. Mm-hmm. And well, then that and becomes your rate card. Yeah. So and YouTube has important. that now too. You yeah. can show all those analytics in the back office of 
of YouTube. Um, but those analytics is where it comes down to when you're talking to these advertisers, when you say we have this many eyeballs this per month that are all interested in this niche or niche or Nietzsche or niche, niche, ball sacks. Nietzsche. Um, <laughs> it's my Nietzsche. Then uh, <laughs> that's where they, they want to play ball since this is a sports podcast. And oh, I'll see what I did there? I see. I saw it. You're welcome. Um, for, uh, I'm just thinking about iTunes right now. What? Uh, how do we get on iTunes? No do clue. You know? Don't know. I don't bet know. you. I, I bet it, you. If it? you Googled that motherfucker, <laughs> there's probably an answer somewhere. <laughs> buried, <laughs> buried amongst 87 million results. Gotcha. Exactly. There's um. Yeah. If you Google that, there's tons of different. You know, you can download about 75 different PDFs of how to get started in podcasting, and it walks you right through. Well, and there again is another big difference. I don't think it costs anything. I don't really employee know. versus employer no, thing, and just in how you become a big boy marketer is a lot of people get stuck in this. Like they let, well, I don't know how to do that. Become a roadblock. Fuck that shit. Google it. You uh, you have access to the largest repository of knowledge ever in human history, and you're going to tell me you can't do something. You better have a fucking mental handicap <laughs> or a physical handicap that enables like disables you from being able to fucking use that. Otherwise you've got Sponsored zero excuse. By the abrasive entrepreneur. <laughs> How's your bad? Brought to you by Bad Rhino. Where rhinos aren't just bad, they're naughty. Naughty rhinos. <laughs> but he's right, just Google that shit. Yeah. yeah. All the information's out there. Yeah. It's just applying it, you know. I mean as a business owner, you know, sometimes you're Googling stuff like, oh, how do I file payroll taxes? Yep. <laughs> the st you know, stuff that you never thought you'd ever Google, but at least a starting point so you can follow Who's up with your accountant. Who's the best CPA in Philadelphia? Yeah. There's a Google. And I'm done. So I'm Time to go to the blind squirrel spot out back. Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> Jeff, why don't you, uh, I want to hear a little bit about your business on, uh, like, the NPN. Uh-huh. Uh, what... What is your favorite tool to market online? Like is it NLP. video? Is it? Uh, I know you said email marketing, but what? What's your favorite distribution? Uh, pretty much all, almost all email. Yeah. Yep. I mean that's the my what I tell everyone to do is basically build a list. Everything, all of your advertising should be, all of your advertising, should be focused on, um, lead generation and building your list. So in this podcast, we give the bribe, like you said, and build that list out from there. Yes. Simple. Yeah. Kind Got of. that, Robert? We got to do that. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Right on. Guys, we're going to wrap it up here. I don't know if you wanted to plug anything you got. Marty, what do, you, uh, do you have any links or anything and any information you want to give people and let them know where you can find you on uh, social media or your businesses? Uh, simple as that. Just go to badrhinoinc.com. You can see everything about my business right there. Um, great blog. Actually going under some construction. It's actually wrapping up next week, and the rest of the content, Rhino, new videos will be going. facelift. No, none of that. No. All social media marketing, Shane. And then, um, yeah, you can check it out there. But, you know, it's all about Benito check today. It out. Check it out. You didn't, <laughs> you, you didn't see what I did there. I have no idea. Your website you. is getting a makeover, so it's a rhinoplasty makeover. You oh, my God. Oh, Jesus, Marty. Jesus, I expect... I expect wit so, like that from Jeff. It's so abrasive. Jesus. Anyway. Shane, if people want to find you, get some of your consulting services, <laughs> where can off. they find you? You can't. I not am not available for hire anymore. All right. I'm really not. Well, I appreciate you being um, here. But then. you can go and follow and get those tips. Um, yeah, really, if you really want to hire me, you will find a way. But there's not a good chance that most people are going to be able to right now. They're not. It's not something I'm interested in. But I am building products that you can buy that can teach you the shit that I do. So there's that. Follow the Abrasive Entrepreneur on Facebook. You're welcome. There you go, Facebook. Abrasive yeah. Entrepreneur. Jeffy. Yo. Where can people <laughs> find you or do you want them to find you? Do you want them to buy your shit? Starbucks. <laughs> well, unlike Shane, I like people. Well, some people. You're so full of shit. I know. <laughs> Global, GlobalNBN.com. It's my main business. Make sure you add my affiliate link and to that. And Shane's affiliate link, whatever that is. Four. Four. <laughs> and, yeah, my blog is jeffishere.com. Jeff is where? Jeff is where? here. Where? Jeff is here. <laughs> Jeff is right here. Right here. Jeffishere.com. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Well, I appreciate you answering some questions. I wanted to kind of tap into your knowledge. and uh, Waffle. You know, 
<laughs> get some funny shit. Here's some funny stuff, and we're going to be uh, doing oh, yeah. this for a couple days. So that was a secret word. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, guys. You can find us on Facebook at the 162 Experience. We're going to upload this uh, episode on YouTube, and we'll put all those affiliate links. If you have any questions, comments, let us know, and we will uh, get you those links and put them up. And uh, we are out. Go Thanks Seattle Seahawks. Fuck the Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs>